Hello everyone. Welcome you all to our India's Car Road Session Part 2. First of all, I would like to thank every one of you for your nice words, suggestions and comments on covering full India's within July. We'll try our level best to cover all the Indian accounting standards through our 15 minutes videos. And once again, I thank every one of you for your nice words. So let's get started. What we'll do today is I'll revise the car votes which we have discussed in the previous car vote session in a minute. The first car vote is on classification of a loan liability in case of breach of covenants. So it should be classified as non-current provided the breaches are rectified before the approval of the financial statements. The second car vote is on in days 10 even after the reporting date this is a consequence to the first car vote so as per this car vote when the when the breaches are rectified after the reporting date and before the approval of the financial statements and the lender waives the breach so it is done away with then it is known or considered as an adjusting event so financial statements can be adjusted with respect to this the third car vote is on the definition of the term previous gap according to our indian environment previous gap would refer to the notified accounting standards by the mca the fourth car vote is on using the carrying cost of the items of property plant and equipment so the cost which is there in my accounting standard can be used as a starting point in indias the fifth car vote is on indias 28 which deals with investments in associates and joint ventures so regional rural banks even if they are associates of the nationalized banks are not required to follow the uniform accounting policies which is indias because it is too advanced for them Let's now start with today's discussion. We'll move to the sixth car vote, which is on long-term foreign currency monetary items. What are monetary items? We all would have read about monetary items and non-monetary items in Accounting Standards 11. I'll give some examples to quickly start with. Cash, bank, payables, receivables are all examples of monetary items. On the other hand, fixed assets. Investments and subsidies are examples of the non-monetary items. So, when an asset or a liability, which is a monetary item, it is denominated in foreign currency, it is referred to as foreign currency monetary items. I'll repeat once again: the assets or liabilities, when it is denominated in foreign currency, it is referred to as the foreign currency non-monetary items. When it is long term, it is referred to as the long term foreign currency monetary items. One of the example of long term foreign currency monetary item is a loan. You can obtain the loan for acquisition of a fixed asset or for the purpose of some other uh, your working capital purpose or some other purpose, business purposes. So we'll follow the regular procedure which we have been following for the previous session. We'll first start with the IFRS principle and we'll move to the principle which is given in India's, which is a carved out principle and lastly understand the reason behind each of the car vote so this is going to be the agenda for each car vote here when we come to the sixth car vote there is no provision in ifrs 1 however indias has carved out in appendix d of indias 101 which is nothing but indias 101 is giving a voluntary exemption to the first time adopter of indias it says that the first time adopter may continue to adopt the same accounting policy that he has been following before for these long term foreign currency monetary items so earlier they would have recognized the exchange differences on the translation of these items so what is translation they will restate their assets and liabilities liabilities at closing rate so that is known as translation so where will they recognize the exchange differences so certain principles were followed in accounting standards now it says that indias is giving a voluntary exemption and it says that the entities can continue to adopt the same accounting policies that they have been following before consequently indias 21 which is dealing with the effects of changes in exchange rates under indian accounting standards also provides that this standard indias 21 will not apply to the long term foreign currency monetary items for which an entity has opted for this voluntary exemption so let us understand the reason behind this uh, car vote so under our earlier accounting standard we had an option to recognize the long term foreign currency monetary items in the statement of pnl either as a part of the cost of property plant and equipment which is my fixed assets or as part of a loan which is charged over the period of the loan so we had two options one was that it is recognized this exchange difference was recognized to the cost of my fixed assets so it will charge to it will get charged to my pnl 
as depreciation. On the other hand, if it is a loan which is obtained, then this exchange difference would be charged to my P&L over the period of the loan. So, I'll once again explain the reason behind this carve out. This is framed in order to provide a transitional relief to the first time adopters of Indias. Under Accounting Stand 11, we had two options. One is to charge into the statement of PNL in the form of depreciation if it's part of acquisition of fixed assets, and the other is to defer its recognition over the period of the loan. So, these are the two options which are available to the entities under the erstwhile accounting standards. So, in order to provide transitional relief, such entities have been given an option to continue the capitalization or deferment of exchange differences as the case may be on foreign currency borrowings obtained before the beginning of the first India's reporting period. Let's move to the next car route. This car route is on India's 103 business combinations and it is relating to gain on bargain purchase. First, I'll make you understand the meaning of the word gain on bargain purchase. Let us take an example in this regard. Let's suppose there is an entity A limited which is planning to acquire entity B limited. The consideration for this transaction is rupees 15 crores. The value of net assets that is to be transferred from B limited to A limited is rupees 18 crores. So what is this 3 crore surplus assets which you have got? This is known as capital reserve under our accounting standards. However, this is a gain on the acquisition and it is referred to as the gain on bargain purchase. The moment I say gain, where will you recognize this is a question now. As per IFRS, this gain on bargain purchase is to be recognized in the statement of profit or loss as an income. However, India says that this is pertaining to my equity holders. So, it should not be recognized as an income. However, this is to be recognized in the other comprehensive income and accumulated in equity as capital reserve. When there is no clear reason for classification of business combination as bargain purchase, in which case it shall be recognized directly in equity as capital reserve. Let us understand the reason behind this car vote. At present, since bargain purchase gain occurs at the time of acquiring a business, these are considered as capital reserve. Recognition of such gains in profit or loss would result into recognition of unrealized gains. This, There is a chance that this may get distributed in the form of dividends. Moreover, such a treatment may lead to structuring through acquisition, which will not be in the interest of the stakeholders of the company. So, in order to avoid recognizing the unrealized gains in the statement of PNL. And to stop this getting distributed in the form of dividends, Indias is carved out saying it should be recognized in other comprehensive income or it should be accumulated to the capital reserve. In both ways, it is going to capital reserve only. Let us move to the next car vote. This car vote is on Indias 115 which deals with revenue contract with customers. To give you a background on, on this India's 115, this standard was notified in March 2018 and it replaces all the existing standards which are there for revenue recognition and construction contracts. So, IFRS says that all types of penalties which may be levied in the performance of a contract should be considered in the nature of variable consideration for recognizing the revenue. I will take out a separate video video for the term for explaining the term variable consideration and in days 115 in my coming videos. For now understand that IFRS says that all the penalties will be included in your revenue irrespective of its uh, reason of inclusion. But Indias has carved out saying that penalties shall be accounted as per the substance of the contract. So it says that you should read the contract fully and only when the penalties are relating to this particular consideration which is given in the contract, then only you can recognize the penalties as a revenue. Otherwise, you cannot recognize penalties as revenue. So Indias is saying that penalties shall be accounted for as per the substance of the contract, where the penalty is inherent in determination of the transaction price. So, transaction price is nothing but the consideration. So, wherever this penalty is forming an inherent part of this consideration, it shall form part of the variable consideration. Otherwise, the same should not be considered for determining the consideration and the transaction price shall be considered as fixed. So, 
The next car vote is on India's 32 financial instruments. As per the accounting treatment prescribed under International Accounting Standard 32, which is also dealing with financial instruments, you have something called as foreign currency denominated convertible bonds. So I told you foreign currency denominated with which means that an asset or a liability is denominated in a foreign currency. Here it says convertible bonds. Convertible bonds are something like which will be converted into equity shares on a later date into a fixed number of equity shares maybe. So this foreign currency denominated convertible bonds are something like these are nothing but the normal bonds but on a later date it will be converted to equity shares. So, IFRS says that there is an option available in this foreign currency denominated convertible bonds. What is the option? The option is that equity conversion is possible. So, this equity conversion option in this bond is considered as a derivative liability which is embedded in this bond as per IFRS. So, all the gains or losses arising on account of fair value changes of this derivative should be recognized in the profit of profit and loss account as per the international accounting standards. However, in days is carved out. It is saying that this equity conversion option which is attached to this convertible bonds is not a derivative liability. However, it is it is my equity instruments. So, for this, an exception has been added to the definition of financial liability. We will look into the definition of financial asset, financial liability and equity instruments when we are covering in days 109. So, one of the exception which is included in the definition of financial liability is that conversion option in a convertible bond denominated in foreign currency is not considered as a derivative liability. However, it is considered as the entity's own equity instruments that is nothing but the equity share capital of the company as an equity instrument if the exercise price is fixed in any currency. So, we have come to the last part of our India's car vote part 2 session. The last car vote is also on India's 115 but with respect to an appendix D to India's 115 which deals with service concession arrangements to India's 115. So, this car vote says that in days 101 has a voluntary exemption with respect to the accounting of financial assets or intangible assets which are accounted in accordance with this appendix G. So my suggestion is please go through this car vote and get in touch with me for any doubts. I'll cover this car vote as part of in days 115 for you to get a better clarity. Before we wind up, we have a quick request for the audience. Please drop in the comment box below your suggestions for the next topic. It can be any Indian accounting standard in specific or other amendments in tax or GST whatever so that we'll cover the most preferred topic in our coming videos. Thank you one and all for your patient listening. Hoping to meet you all soon in our next session. Thank you and bye from Radha and the Breakdown team. Thank you.